Japan is well known in the West today as a place of cutting edge technology, bullet trains, anime, lots of fluffy toys and Pokemon. The overall vibe of Japan is clearly that of a cute innocent place with lots of fun things to do and a welcoming and respectful culture to back this up. However, if you look past this modern facade, unfortunately you will find some of the most disgusting and deplorable acts ever committed in known history. Unit 731, under the command of a man named Shiro Ishii, is a prime example of this. Before I start, this video is not for children. Unit 731 was a biological and chemical warfare research facility that ran for over a decade up until the end of World War II. It was sanctioned by the Japanese government and during this time it's estimated that over 580,000 people died as a result of its work. Whilst this is horrifying in itself, some of these deaths were from human experimentation that they were committing on either innocent Chinese civilians in the Pingfan region or prisoners of war. Before I continue, if you have any kind of a sensitive stomach I'd advise you click off the video. During the biological testing, the scientists would perform human vivisections, i.e. performing surgery on humans, uh, men Men, women and children, even babies. One Unit 731 member described how it was important that the subject be alive during the surgery, as the bacteria that developed once someone died would skew the results. If that wasn't bad enough, the operators would not give the prisoners anaesthetic either, as apparently this also messed with the results. The victims would usually die to blood loss whilst the surgeons were operating on them. These kind of experiments would be happening daily across the entire facility, from when it first opened to the end of the war. Just to give an idea of how big this facility was, some aircraft photos were released of the complex. It contained over 150 buildings on a site that was over 6 kilometers squared. The historian Daniel Barenblatt, who I'm getting a lot of this information from, said it best as a secret city devoted to human experimentation. Some of these buildings included breeding houses for rats and insects that would be used as part of their experiments to create these weapons. And there would also be chimneys, similar to the ones in the German concentration camps where they would burn the bodies. One of the most disturbing things about the layout of this facility though, is how right next to all of this there were facilities for the Unit 731 workers and their families, which included restaurants, a school for the children of the employees, a cinema, a gym, and even a brothel. To my knowledge, we don't know exactly what went on in all of the 150 buildings at Pingfan. We do have some descriptions from Japanese veterans of one of the rooms, however, that had glass containers holding dead bodies of babies, children, dismembered organs and legs, and even a dead Russian soldier hanging from the ceiling who'd been cut in half. There's also a lot more disturbing stuff that went on in Unit 731, including the female prisoners being constantly raped by the guards, people being placed in pressure chambers until they died, being exposed to frostbite resulting in the loss of body parts, and people being injected with horrible diseases then being forced to mate with other prisoners. The reason I'm making this video is not only to shed light on the less spoken about atrocities that the Japanese committed in World War II, but also to talk about something rather worrying that I found about Unit 731 that relates to the present day. Japan very much seems to have tried to sweep this information under the rug. Over 20,000 Japanese scientists, physicians, etc. were involved in this project during the war. One of the scientists who worked there mentioned that pretty much every microbiologist in Japan was in some way connected to Unit 731. The reason I mention this is because after the war, Unit 731 was largely unknown to the wider world, all the way up until the 1990s. Considering the huge number of people that were involved in the project, it's absolutely astonishing that very little was known about it by the general population until about 50 years later. In the early 2000s, 180 Chinese relatives of the victims killed in Unit 731 took the case to court, demanding an apology and compensation from Japan for the torture and murder of their family members. The Japanese government had only recently admitted that Unit 731 even existed, which is when these people decided to go to court. The case ended up getting rejected, none of the family members got any compensation from the Japanese government, and they didn't even get an apology either. Thank you very much for watching this video, I'll explain the sources I've got for this information. The first one is a book by the name of A Plague Upon Humanity by Daniel Barenblatt, The Hidden History of Japan's Bar biological warfare program, and the second is Factories of Death by Sheldon H. Harris. These are both books on Unit 731, you can buy them, they are very good. They contained a lot of the information that I used to make this video. I will say there's not very much information online about Unit 731. There's a lot of rough details with very little specific information, and it's very interesting that you actually can't find that much about Unit 731 on the internet. I have not talked about the specifics of Unit 731, but to find the specifics you really have to look through these books, so if you are interested. I'd suggest reading those two books, they're very useful. And thank you very much for watching. Please like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'm trying to get some more uh, viewership on my channel, so thank you very much, that would be appreciated.